Hello everyone. Today we are going to cover auto FS topic for the RHCSA exam. So before we get into the practical part, let us understand what is the need of this auto FS. Now in a normal scenario, let us suppose that you are managing a server and you want to share one file with certain clients. Now let us suppose if there are n number of clients so that number can vary for each client you as an administrator will have to push the file to each one of those clients with whom you want to share the file so if the number of clients are too large you have to manually push this file to each of these clients and for every file you need to repeat this process so it becomes very difficult for an administrator to manage this particular scenario now with the use of nfs what we can do is that in the server we create a directory and whatever files we want to share we keep it we keep those files in that directory now any client which wants to access these files can connect to the server and as soon as they connect the files the shared files will be visible to that particular client so now the onus is not on the server or the administrator but on the clients to make the connection and immediately that file or those shared files will be visible now let us suppose you want to share another file so you simply need to do what keep that file in that shared directory and as soon as you do that on the server it will be shared or it will be available to all those clients which are connected with the server using nfs now in a traditional scenario with nfs what happens is that you need to use mount command or you can make use of the etc fs tab file where you make the entry or you make a persistent mount now if you make use of the etc fs tab file entry then that connection this connection between the client and the server is a permanent connection now it will not be the case that you want the connection to be active all the time because this is going to face the network bandwidth because you are not sharing the files all the times now comes the use of auto fs so with auto fs what happens is that this auto fs service automatically mounts the shared directory which we call as the nfs share on demand and it will automatically unmount those shared directories when they are no longer being used okay so this means that using auto fs the client can make a connection with the server to access that shared directory only when it requires the files from that particular shared directory and whenever those that connection is not required the auto fs will automatically unmount the shared directory from the client machine so some of the advantages of using auto fs are the shared directories the nfs shared directories are not permanently connected so if they are not permanently connected this means that you are going to save on the network and system resources second the auto mounter is configured on the client machine so this means that there is no server side configuration that is required finally nfs shares are available to all users but they are subject to the access permissions for that particular user now let us see how to configure auto fs in practical so the setup will look like this what i'm going to do is i'm going to connect two machines one will act as the server whose ip address will be 192.168.43.237 so here i'm going to use a nfs share which is slash share so whatever content i put into this directory that content i want to share with the client machines so the client machine ip address in this case will be 192.168.43.22 so these are the two machines that i will be using on the client machine the content the shared content will be available at the mount point slash auto underscore mount So first we are going to set up the server so you need to install the package for NFS 
em install and you can write nfs star okay so this will install all the required packages for nfs so i have already installed these packages in my system so there's nothing to do so once you have installed the required packages now whichever directory you want to share let's suppose i will create a new one let's suppose the name is share so this is the directory whose contents i want to share with all the clients and now let us create some files to be shared so f1 and let's suppose these two are the files that i want to share okay just to be sure later on let us edit one of the files and write some content okay this is a test for nfs save it all right so now what we need to do is first change the permissions to allow everyone to have an access on this share directory and now we need to export this so we need to edit a file etc exports so here we need to make an entry first is which directory i want to share so that is slash share and then we need to write the ip address of the clients so whichever client you want to share in my case the ip address of the client is 192.168.43.22 and then what kind of permissions so i want the clients just to read it read the contents okay if you want to read right then you can write here rw so this is what i want save it and now we need to export it using export fs hyphen minus avr okay so now this particular folder is being shared with the client 192.168.43.22 now we need to do little bit changes with the firewall rules so write firewall cmd we need to add certain services add service equal to now we need to add nfs mount d and rpc bind permanently so write hyphen hyphen permanent now write success reload firewall cmd hyphen cmd hyphen hyphen reload right so the server part is done now we need to configure the client and access the directory or the contents of the directory share now for the client we need to install two packages so it will be yum install nfs utils and auto fs okay so these are the two packages that you need to install i have already installed them so nothing to do for me now once you install it now the client will check that which nfs share volume is available okay on the server machine so you will use show mount command show mount minus e and then the ip address of the server <coughs> so the ip address is 192.168.43 dot 237 so this is the ip address of my server okay the command is wrong show mount m o right so you can see that the share directory that we created in the on the server is available for access now the next step is that we need to edit the file slash etc 
स्लैश ऑटो डॉट मास्टर ओके नाउ हेयर वन एंट्री इज ऑलरेडी देयर सो वी जस्ट नीड टू मेक एन एंट्री हेयर फॉर आवर सेल्स सो वट वी वॉन्ट इज दिस वी कैन कमेंट सो दिस वी कैन कमेंट हेयर नाउ what i want is which is the for there be two entries rather there are three entries here first one is the name of the directory that will be used for accessing or for mounting okay so this is the mount point on the client machine so let's suppose here i name it as auto underscore mount okay need not to create this directory it will be automatically created so this is the mount point then the second entry will be the map file name so there is a default map file which is slash etc slash auto dot misc okay so this is what you can write third entry is for the timeout so this is optional even if you don't specify fine if you want you can specify that for how long it can try if there is no connection it will automatically time out so i'm just going to skip this okay save this now you need to edit the map file which was slash etc slash auto dot misc okay so here some entries are already there so you just need to add your entry in the end so the first point here will be the mount point so let's suppose it is xs then you need to tell the file system type so here you can write read write so what you can do is you can read write soft and i n t r okay so this is what you need to write and the last thing is the nfs share path so you write here the ip address 192.168.43.237 this is the ip address of the server then on the server where it is slash share okay so this was the directory save it okay so this is what you need to do now let's suppose if you simply write here ls star okay ls slash not star so you see the mount point is not created but now if you execute this command system ctl enable auto fs hyphen hyphen now all right if you now check ls slash you will see that the file auto mount the directory auto mount is automatically created okay so you need not to create it it will automatically be created once you start auto fs okay now you move into this auto underscore mount cd slash right so what we have done is inside this we have created the mount point access so cd access right now if i do ls you can see the files f1 and f2 which you created on the server if i show you the contents of f1 which where i wrote something so you can see this is a test for nfs okay this is what i have written on the server part now remember you need not to do the server configuration for the exam this is for your practice only need not to do the server configuration you are only required to do the client part the server they have already configured they will tell you the details for the server okay what is the server name what is the ip address what is the nfs share or the uh, the directory which is shared from the server everything they will tell you about the server 
you are required only to do the configuration for the client part okay so this is all about how to access or how to use auto fs